Greetings, folks. My name is Dustin Cormier, and welcome to How to Rock Astrology. Today, we are going to be going into our final reading from the true story of the Nakshatra Gods by Vic Takara. Uh, this comes from Nakshatra, the Authentic Heart of Vedic Astrology by Vic Takara. This is our last episode in this series. And it's fitting that the last episode would start with the ending and the beginning and everything in between. Today we are going to be talking about Vishnu, who was the Lord deity over Shravana, Uttarashada, and Danishta, Nakshatra. <clears throat> so this is the final, this is also the final episode in the series in the section talking about the Hindu trinity, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. <clears throat> now, from here, Viktikara begins talking from our chapter entitled Vishnu. Like Brahma and Shiva, Vishnu is understood differently, depending on your point of view. The philosophical Uttara school sees Vishnu as the primal conscious entity, the substrate of reality itself, pure awareness. The practical Purva school, however, isn't very concerned with such lofty, abstract ideas, and instead sees Vishnu mainly as the god of locomotion, empowering our feet to move swiftly and effectively. Uh, and it's right to think that the deity of Vishnu does work on both of these levels, in the abstract Uttara sense as the Christ consciousness, and in the nakshatra sense as the symbol archetype of the nakshatras that Vishnu represents, Shravana, Uttarashada, and Dahanishta. Now, Vic tells us that indeed the word Shravana literally means flow, and the nakshatra Shravana is symbolized by footprints. In fact, it is symbolized by three footprints in particular, a reference to how Vishnu rescued the gods from exile. This is one of my favorite stories. After suffering a defeat as a result of losing the nectar of immortality in a very important story, uh, it's the story of the milk being churned a classic story that I'm going to get to eventually in my readings. After suffering defeat as a result of losing the nectar of immortality, the Asura king, Bali, sought help from scholars and became a dedicated disciple of a mystic school scholar named Shukra. Pleased with Bali's sincere dedication, Shukra and the others blessed him to have unmatched power. In addition, Shukra equalized the advantage the gods gained by possessing the nectar of immortality. He promised to revive any Asura slain by the gods. Enriched with pow the powerful blessings of Shukra, that's Venus, and the scholars, Bali confidently marched upon paradise at the head of an army of Asuras. Upon seeing his might from afar, Indra trembled and sought guidance from his own scholar and guide, Brihaspati. Bali is undefeatable, Brihaspati told Indra. The wisest thing that you could do would be to flee from paradise with all the gods. Hide yourselves in the forests and caves. 
Thus, Bali walked into paradise uncontested. There, he took Indra's throne and gained command over the three worlds. Aditi lamented to see her divine children in exile, so she called Vishnu to become her child and save them. He soon appeared before her as a beautiful, pleasant, small boy, Vamana, who adopted a student's lifestyle and manifested superb conversance with all the information and knowledge found in the Vedas. Please, Aditi petitioned, please save your brothers and sisters. We cannot defeat Bali in combat, Vamana replied, but I can leverage the very thing that has made him undefeatable, his loyalty to and respect for scholars. Vamana then walked peacefully into Bali's court at the bottom of the subterranean heavens, where he was greeted warmly by the king. Please allow me to give you charity, Bali asked the philosopher child. Ask me for anything. All right, Vamana replied. Please give me three strides of land. Just three strides? Bali asked incredulously. incredulously. I, I rule the three worlds. Please, my, my, my child, ask for something bigger. Dear King, Vamana, the small philosopher child replied, if one is not happy with three paces of land, one will not be happy with all the three worlds either. You, of all people, should know this. So, all I want is three paces. Profoundly impressed with the philosopher child's depth of realization and profundity, Bali immediately began to make his promise, but Shukra rushed to stop him. This is very suspicious, Shukra whispered in Bali's ear. I suspect this boy is Vishnu, hatching some scheme to reclaim paradise for the gods. Bali replied, So what if he is? He is a wise philosopher, and I shall grant his request. If he takes my kingdom, so be it. As soon as Bali promised Vamana three pieces of three paces of land, the boy grew huge and took an incredibly long stride from the lower heavens all the way up to the earth. Then, with a second stride, he traversed from the earth to the highest heaven, with his toe piercing the shell of the world itself through which the divine water that would eventually become the Ganges began to flow. You promised three steps, Vavana declared to the positively awestruck Bali. But with just, true, with, with just two, I have taken everything you own. How now will you fulfill your promise? Bali responded, Vishnu, you have not yet claimed my heart. I still possess that. So, put your third step on my head to proclaim my very being. Very satisfied that Bali had demonstrated to the world the peerless nature of his character, Vamana then declared, Dear Bali, I have taken paradise from you but I will give it back in full when I make you Indra in the future. Between now and then, you will dwell in a realm called Sutala, where you shall neither age nor feel fatigue nor grief. I will remain there with you always and personally protect you from any intruder. This story illustrates many things about Vishnu and thus about 
Shravana Nakshatra. Vishnu is indebted to any act of devotion, like Bali's honesty and dedication. He is fair, accomplishing what the gods deserve without violating what Bali deserved. He does not use brute force, but achieves his aims instead through intelligence, strategy, words, and charm. And he is able to move swiftly and effectively. The two nakshatras directly adjacent to Shravana are also directly associated with Vishnu. On one side of Shravana is Uttarashada, which belongs to a divinity named Vishvadeva. We might consider this a reference to the ten sons of goddess Vishva, each of whom has a particular quality that plays an essential role in acquiring success and victory, which, we, which the word Ashada represents. Or, it may be closer to the mark to consider this a reference to all the gods taken together as a whole without partiality. The word Vishvadeva literally means the divinity, Deva, that is everywhere, Vishva. Thus, Vishvadeva is a synonym for Vishnu, the all-pervading divinity. It especially refers to the individual rays of consciousness who expand from Vishnu into every nook and cranny of existence, the divinity that is everywhere and in every one at the spiritual core of each and every one of us. On the other side of Shravana is Tanishta, formerly known as Shravishta, which belongs to a divinity known as Vasu, and this literally means an object or an article of wealth. It's Vasu. In classical Vedic thought, there are eight types of tangible objects. The primary five are earth, water, fire, air, and space. In addition to these five, there are three special objects which govern and regulate the production and evolution of the others. These are the sun, the moon, and the stars, all other lights in the heavens, including what we call planets. That's what is meant by stars. Each of the fundamental eight Vasu objects is the expression of a particular divinity. And Ernst lists them here. Just so you can see them. Earth is Pratavi. Pratavi. Water is Apas. Fire is Agni. Air is Vayu. Space is Jaus. Stars is Nakshatrani, moon is Chandra, and the sun is Aditya. The stars, moon, and sun regulate how the other five basic elements can combine together to produce specific, complex, desirable objects of wealth. They do so because their movements are the universe's fundamental markers of time. And time is what allows our efforts, our karma, to create changes and thus to bring specific objects into and out of existence. Cosmic creation stuff. Also, the three super objects, stars, moon, and sun, correspond to the three elements of subtle matter. The sun corresponds to our ego, the moon to our emotional mind, and the stars to our pattern-making intellect. All physical reality, composed of earth, water, fire, air, and space, is a result of the endeavors made and desires held by the intellect, emotions, and ego 
of conscious beings. All conscious beings <clears throat> are rays of the superconscious being, the ultimate root of all conscious individuals, Vishnu. Vishnu is therefore the ultimate source of all reality, Vasu. This is why he is referred to as Vasudeva, the divinity of reality. Varaha, Mihira, in fact, refers to Danishta explicitly as the abode of Vasudeva. So, Shravana is the nakshatra of consciousness itself. Uttara Ashada is the nakshatra of individual conscious entities. And Tanishta is the nakshatra of the objects of perception, desirable sounds, sights, tastes, and so on. The limbs of Vishnu whose bliss permeate unmistakably into reality everywhere and every when. Aum. Aum. I wish I knew more Vedic mantras than just Aum, but I'm thankful that I at least know that one because it is in the, like Vishnu, it is the all permeating vibration of all things with evolution included within it thank you ladies and gentlemen for watching this series with me and for hanging out with me while we talked about the big hitters in vedic literature and mythology i'm dustin cormier you've been watching how to rock astrology this has been our discussion of the nakshatra gods, the true story of the nakshatra gods from the authentic heart of Vedic astrology, nakshatra. It's by Vic Dakara. If you guys enjoyed the series, pay him a visit. See the true originating consciousness who composed this brilliant little narrative. Uh, I love Vic Dakara's stuff. I love his work. Uh, and I, I truly advocate for it. And I'm glad to have been able to be a messenger for the brilliant consciousness that he does his thing through. I'm Dustin Cormier for How to Rock Astrology. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you guys keep enjoying the content that I keep putting out. Bless. Namaste.